essentially running rigging is anything that runs loosely on the boat or moves on the boat. Sheets are what control the trim of the sail. We'll start with our jib sheet. It runs aft through the fair lead and then onto the winch. The winch gives mechanical advantage to the line. So you can pull it by hand and then after that you'll use a winch handle to be able to trim your sail, torque in and trim your sail. Now back here is the main sheet. So the main sheet is for the main sail. We have jib sheets, main sheets. And the main sheet is a compound block because we have a lot of pressure on that. But then it exits here at the bottom. And this is called a cam cleat. And that's what holds the line in. So when you push it down, now it's loose. But then when I want to tighten it up, I just tighten it up. And then the cam cleat holds it. So this is our traveler. And what it's used for is to either spill or capture more wind. On heavy wind days, as you flatten your sail, one of the first things you might do is ease the traveler to leeward, right? So the wind is coming this way. If we were to ease it to leeward, we basically move this adjustment and then the sail would slide to leeward. If on the other hand, we had a real light wind day and we wanted to capture all of the wind coming off the sail, we'd move it to windward, just the opposite. So we'd set our piece and we move it to windward to capture all of the wind coming from the Baha'i Temple. The roller furling is at the bow of the boat, and that allows us to unfurl our sail and refurl our sail. So refurling our sail means pulling in on this line to wind it in. And then when we wind it out or let it, let it go out, we put tension on it to make sure that it unfurls and the drum forward is packed fairly. The other parts of the running rigging include halyards. So this is the main halyard. It runs all the way through the mast, then it comes back down and attaches to the head of the sail. Think haul yards when you think of halyards. So the halyards, as part of the running rigging, haul up the sail, haul yards, halyards, and then they're made at the top with a rope clutch. And in here is a deck winch. So that means that as I torque it up, this is giving me additional tension to be able to make the sail and close the rope clutch and keep it all the way up. We have a couple other parts. One is the boom bang. So what the boom bang does is tension the leech of the sail. And by flattening the sail, we'll use a boom bang. We'll also use an outhaul that I'll show you in a minute. And we also then would use a Cunningham. So the Cunningham is used at the luff of the sail and pulls down on the luff to tension the luff of the sails. At the aft and attached to the clue of the sail is a fitting, right? We call these shackles. This is a shackle, here's a shackle, there's several others, but this cable pulls the sail out. So it tensions the foot of the sail, right? And so the outhaul tensions the foot of the sail. It goes through the boom, comes out at the fore of the boom, and then goes back and is made on a cleat aside the boom. Other parts of the running rigging family is a boom topping lift. So what the boom topping lift does is it keeps the boom out of the cockpit. On smaller boats, the boom topping lift is essential because as soon as you let the sail down, if you don't have one, the boom would drop into the cockpit. In this case, between the boom bang and our boom topping lift, it keeps the boom out of the cockpit. These other lines that you'll see coiled here are our reef lines. The reef lines are made to loops on the side, right? This is our first reef. So this is a reef clue. Here is our sail clue. And then as we tension this down, it'll make a new reef smaller than the original sail. So this is our first reef. The second reef is way up here. And that is made similarly. We tighten it down onto the sail and pull it back so we have a nice tight outhaul. We'll talk a little bit about the backstay. So we've talked about ways to flatten a sail. And an adjustable backstay is used to tension the luff of the foresail. So it actually pulls the mast back. In the cockpit here, we have where the helms person steers. Now, whether they use a tiller or they use a wheel, it's all about steering. This is more of ASA 103, but this is the binnacle. 
right? So the binnacle is basically this superstructure that holds the steering, steering mechanism. On the binnacle is a binnacle compass. Later, as you work and progress through your ASA certifications, you'll talk about a binnacle compass or her ship's compass. This is the ship's compass. It's a compass we use to, to navigate.